Hey there, I'm Tim Burnett, and this is the Solo Hunter Podcast. I'm all about hunting good, eating good, self-sufficiency, and downright rugged individualism. We're talking hunting and adventure, business and life with other self-sufficient and like-minded individuals. This is podcast episode number 13, the nitty gritty of branding, the power of compelling content, and the jab jab hook of social media marketing. Mine started out kind of a mess, really. Like I didn't do it right. I may not still be doing it right. What are some mistakes that you think people make in general? I think the number one mistake is you just got a crappy name to begin with. Words are powerful. Say what you mean, mean what you say. What's going to carry your brand is going to be your content. When people are building content, really what they're what, what you're doing is building a community. Like, all right, I need to set on a specific logo. I wanted mm-hmm. to do my own business, and I wanted that business to be in the hunting industry. And when I was 12 years old, I told myself I wanted to make hunting videos for a living. That's the track that I, right. that I took. I want to have good entertainment, but I don't want to be a jackass. I want to go on tough hunts, but I don't so, want to kill myself. What do you mean... Don't be a jackass. Yeah, that might have been a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be bundled up when I'm sitting still all day. I don't sit still all day. Yeah. I stand and I flex all day. <laughs> Keep the blood pumping. You've done a great job with Solo Hunter, creating a brand. And um, I hear Tim on the phone and stuff dealing with, um, you know, people interested in the brand and following along and. And uh, you build product and design some things and people get involved and it's a, it's a neat deal. So I think it's something we need to talk about some more because, you know, I built Gritty, you know, and there's a lot of areas where I have a uh, ways to go and some holes in my game, you know. I think a brand isn't something that you just set out for and just say, hey, you know, I'm going to create a brand, mm-hmm. you know. That's that's one thing you can do, I think, if you're going to start with apparel, come up with a catchy name and do your brand. But like doing what you and I are doing or whatever, where you're actually creating a product, whether your product is digital content or, um, in my case, digital content and some physical physical products that I've invented and brought to market and that kind of thing. Like it kind of evolves. It has to kind of evolve itself. You know, mm-hmm. um, you can. I don't know. You have to you have to have kind of a reason for it, I suppose. In addition, than just trying to create an apparel line. Yep. Um, and like we talked about last time, brands all brands are different. There's a mm-hmm. lot of different levels of brands and different things. I think. Well, I think that when people like get a solo hat or you know a solo shirt or whatever, there's a certain you know <clears throat> or gritty. I mean there's uh, an association with that brand. Like they identify with it. They value it. They like what it stands for. Um, and they want to support it and be part of that community. That's and the so, hope. Yeah. If you're doing your job right, that yeah. people are going to want to. I really do believe strongly in the law of reciprocity where you give people quality or give them content or give them something that they value. And and they'll give back in return because they're they're grateful for it, you know. Yeah. And um, mine started out kind of a mess, really. Like I didn't do it right to begin yeah. with, and I didn't. I may not still be doing it right, you know. I started out with a TV show, mm-hmm. and the branding was not. It was not even on my mind at the time. It was like, hey, I got this TV show. It's called Solo Hunters, and. And uh, we had a cool logo modeled off of the Beatles logo. I don't know if mm-hmm. you remember the old original Solo Hunters logo. And, and uh, you know, that was fine, but I didn't really consider it a brand. It was just a TV show. And then I had my rifle cover that I invented at the same time, but it was called the Predator Max rifle cover. So here I have these kind of two different competing things, but I use a TV show to sell my rifle covers. And um, then I kind of wised up. I'm like, this is the show's becoming more and more popular. Mm-hmm. Um, the name is cool. I'm starting to get requests for hats and shirts and that kind of thing. And then that's when really the brand started to click. Cause I didn't really go at this saying, I want to start a brand. I went at this as I want to start a TV show. You know, that was the difference. Right. And so what I decided to do is I'm like, well, the first thing I need to do is drop the S because solo hunters, that really doesn't make any sense. It's like you got a single plural, you know? Mm-hmm. So I dropped the S and it became solo hunter, you know? 
And at that point, then I started to dabble in some hats and shirts. And then we started to do a few more, um, you know, design ideas, trying to come up with some new products and that kind of thing. And it just kind of grew from there. And then it was like, okay, now I need a logo for this Mm -hmm. rather than just the name solo hunters. So then I started with just a, there's a bazillion different solo hunter logos out there that I, that I did. And I'd go from one to the other. And that's one thing is I just was never satisfied with anything, you know? And so my brand just kind of evolved over time, even though the name really was always there and Mm -hmm. the marketing, like the, the visual part of it, of the TV show and the, and the YouTube channel and the videos and everything that was always there. Um, but it really didn't kind of come together until a couple of years ago, you know, when it was like, all right, I need to set on a specific logo or two, you know, I, <laughs> I like to have, I mean, the hunting industry likes their horns, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so we have the solo man that's in one of the forms of the logo. Right. And then we have the icon S with the H in it. If you look at it, it's yep. a solo S and an H and a little bit of both. Yeah. And Joel, Joel has come on, um, Last October, so it's been a year, over a little over a year that Joel came on to really help me with some of the branding stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kind of set me down and slapped me a little bit and say, "This is how a brand should work." Yeah, you know, you're random. You're just you're 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 floundering between creating content, you know, quasi ce- hunting celebrity status, quasi product as well. Cause mm-hmm. then I had the, the bino system and the bow sling and other things that I started to license and really started to materialize the merchandise side. Right. And, um, so he's really helped me package and, and dial that all in. So, so what are some of the mistakes you made? What are some mistakes that you think people make in general? Um, mistake people, I think the number one mistake is you just got a crappy name to begin with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, there's, I'm not a predator. I'm not an addict. I'm not a junkie. I'm not a, you know, whatever. That's the hard thing is like when you think a name sounds cool, but you have to have also something to go with a name, right? Yeah. I think name is Um, huge. Huge. When you start talking like, no offense if someone has this name. Like I just pissed about 60 people off probably. Bucks and horns. (laughs) Horns and, you know packing racks and it's like i feel like i mean a lot of that stuff is um it it sounds just like every other name that's out there there's names that are cool and that are catchy and all that but you know what you have to do is look at look at the brands that are out there that are successful you know what Mm -hmm. makes them stand out um so if i look at some you know let's just throw out you've you've talked about montana wild Mm -hmm. that's a cool name right montana wild Logo is pretty cool too because you got an M and a W and it kind of yep. flip it and all that. Like they did a really good job with that. Um, yep. Meat eater, brilliant. I mean, how much more right. simple can you do a a basically a media house that they are? You mm-hmm. know, meat eater. It's awesome. Bone collector, another example. You know, you could go down the list of all these brands and see what they've done and done a good job with. And then you see the ones that have struggled and then you look at them and say, well, why is this brand struggled? Is it because that, that man isn't as good of a business person as the other person? Or is it because that just didn't resonate with, with an audience right. and they didn't do a very good job marketing that, you know? Right. Right. Um, yeah. I agree with that. So the name is, is a big deal. Name and the brand. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you mean? The brand? Like the, the symbol, look. the yeah, logo, the look. The look. There, there's some brands out there. I don't even know anything about their companies, nothing whatsoever. So mm-hmm. I was attracted to Mountain Ops because of the brand. I didn't, when I first saw the logos and stuff, I didn't even know what the product was. I right. was like, wow, that's a pretty cool mark. I like that. Yeah. You know, and then obviously you look at the, the things or whatever and, and whatever else is. You look at some, a com- a competing product to mountain ops that came on the scene after the, after the fact that I like is what is it? Uh, Dara dark timber or dark, dark timber coffee. No, it's, they do supplements too, but it's, they got a cool logo. What the heck is it? I forgot. Dark mountain, dark mountain. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Cool logo. Really cool logo. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see who else has a really cool logo out there. Yeah. There's a few. 
Yeah. I guess I think Solo Hunter. That's an awesome logo. He's a box <laughs> icon. Gritty Bowman. No. I, I, but but I, that, that catches your eye. Your eye. You know, yeah. It really does. Yeah. No, and I, I wanted the name to – I've always thought that names are powerful. Words are powerful. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. <laughs> you know, y- use your words. And I feel like when I was trying to think of a name for what I wanted to do, grit just stood out. Yeah. Grit, gritty, kind of summarized the sort of thing that I was – I wanted to present and what I wanted the show to be about, you know <clears> – <throat> Like real, raw, in, you know, dogged, determined, all that kind of stuff. I like that. And so that's kind of what I went with. And I also wanted it to be something that stuck in people's heads. Right. Like Definitely. where they don't forget it. It's just kind of like, oh, it's there. And at the time, there wasn't really anybody using the word grit or gritty. Right. And so it was kind of a dead word. Well, when this guy asked... To talk about branding, did he did he have anything any context to it, or just did he just no? He just said he enjoyed the very first podcast we did on branding. So I'm assuming that people are like talking about creating their own brand or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, again taking the assumption that they're talking about start an apparel line. No, no, I don't think I don't think apparel. I think because why else have a brand unless you have an actual physical product or. Or maybe a digital product. I mean, is, is your yeah, brand a digital or... product is big today, right? Sure. Because there's no barriers to entry. You don't have to. Everyone can start a YouTube channel. You know, you look at Hush. You look at Born and Raised Outdoors. Right. You look at even Randy Newberg moved from TV to right. YouTube. So anybody can produce content. Right. Now it's a matter of how do you get people to watch it? How do you differentiate yourself from other people? How do you brand it? And building a community around that name and around that brand. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense than, I don't know. I just guess when I thought, of, when I think of brand, I always think of apparel and that kind of stuff, you know, what, like a dead eye or a, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But um, on the video side, like what's going to carry your brand is going to be your content, mm-hmm. you know? So does your content match your brand? You know, right. you can't be, I shouldn't say you can't be, but if you are um, trying to bridge the crossover, say, say you're a whitetail guy, mm-hmm. it's really hard to be a backcountry whitetail guy, right? So if, you're, if your brand is backcountry whitetails, you better be hunting hunt whitetails in the backcountry, you know? And there's a few people who are. Be- yeah. And if you are, that's a perfect blend mm-hmm. for your brand, but you can't build it off of hunting them. You know, behind Walgreens. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, everybody's backcountry is, is different too. Yeah. You know, everybody's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's what you have access to is what you're going to be familiar with and what you're going to have experience with. So in living here in Oklahoma, when I lived here, I had access to, mm-hmm. you know, this up here, we're not, I mean, where we're hunting we are on the edge of town. Right. You know? Yeah. So yeah. There's, like there's we're, no surprise. We're in a hotel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so th- that would have to go born and raised outdoors, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, or hush or solo hunter or whatever it is. It's it really, your content needs to match what your name would be. I would think. So when people are building content, really what they're, what, what you're doing is building a community. Maybe, yeah, maybe you should build the name around the type of content you're doing instead of the content around the type of name that you want. They should go hand in hand, don't you think? Yeah, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should match. Just, I mean, but, but when it comes down to content creation, right? Yeah. We've talked about this. Do, do you just kind of throw up raw video Every day uh, of hunts on like YouTube, kind of like Hush does. What do you? What Although I'd say happy? their stuff's a lot more polished than it was in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. What What do you want out of it? Like I tell people all the time, is people would ask, you know, the advice on how to get into the hunting industry. How do I get to a position where you're at or whatever? And I'm like, well, you got to look at where you want to be and work backwards. Mm-hmm. What's it going to take to get you to that position? Because it's easy to look at someone and say. Wow, I want to I want to do what Brian Call does, or I want to do what Tim Burnett does. And it's like, okay, well, there was there's 15 years of hunting industry 
that got to this point. So mm-hmm. you don't, you don't see that 15 years. You might see right. some of the progression of it over, t- over time, but you don't just jump and become, you know, I, I guess popular in the, in the industry mm-hmm. or become a four. I don't know what, how you would describe that. You don't just all of a sudden go to making a living or, or anything yeah. overnight without coming up with something, but you have to, you have to figure out what you want to be and then incrementally plan out and so, figure out those steps to get. There. So I have in my head some thoughts, but what do you think, like when you're building content, what is your goal? Like what is your objective with that content to do? Okay. I want it to, like, I, I always want to have good cinematography, but I don't want to overproduce it. I want to have good entertainment, but I don't want to be a jackass. I want to go on tough hunts, but I don't so, want to kill myself. What do you mean, don't be a jackass? Yeah, that might have been a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> there's good no, entertainment. Okay, what I mean is there's no reason to act. You be who you are. You don't have to act. Okay. You know when somebody's acting on camera, right? Right, right. You watch it, and there's things that are done, and you're like, wow, he's really excited about that deer. Maybe that's the way he is. Maybe that's the way he is. I, I don't if he, you just have to be yourself. So that's right. what I mean. Don't be a jackass. Be yourself, yep. and don't don't think that you're doing something just for the sake of. You think that that's what people want to see. Yeah, I've been a jackass at times. I will admit. I think there. I think we all fall into that, right? Even people just just that aren't building a brand. They're just themselves on social media. Well, we all. Every, every, for some reason, people we want to be noticed, right? We want to be validated. I don't. I don't know if mm-hmm. that's the right word, but it's like. We, is it pride or what is it? Mm-hmm. Why do, why do we want to be popular in the hunting industry or even do we, you know, or in any space? I didn't care about being popular. I cared about, I wanted to do this for a living. I didn't want to work for Joe Blow. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a boss. I wanted mm-hmm. to do my own business and I wanted that business to be in the hunting industry. And when I was 12 years old, I told myself I wanted to make, I wanted to make hunting videos for a living. Yeah. So that's what I, that's the track that I Right. That I took. So you can't just do that without somebody paying you or somebody, you got to make money somehow. So what do I do? I sell my product. Mm-hmm. I sell sponsors products. You know, there's a whole process okay. to that. So, so go back to, um, w- more about the, w- what's your objective with the content you're creating? My objective is you have to create something that you're proud of, you know, and that other people will want to consume. So what's going to make my content different than anybody else's? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm by myself. So there's one, one mark. Okay. Yeah. Um, self filming it. Um, they're hard hunts. You know, these aren't purchased hunts. They're not landowner tags. They're not, you but know, they're public land other than a white tail hunt, blah, blah, blah. But it's, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So we're doing these hunts just like I would have been doing, before but, the TV show or anything. But you're not else. doing these epic, like... I can't afford it. Physically, like, crushing type of hunts. I think they're physically crushing for a fat man. I Most of my hunts are physically <laughs> right. crushing. No, but I'm not... There's a certain financial uh, level that I'm yeah. not at to be able to do a lot of those. But like you were saying, you want to hunt hard, but you don't want to kill yourself. I want to hunt... The exact same hunts that I'm doing, whether I'm doing it for TV or not, Yep. until you can get to the point where it's like, hey, I drew a tag or, hey, yeah. you know what? I'm going to Alaska because I, de- I deserve it, you know, right. whatever. Right. I wanted to resonate and relate to my buddies, you know, to mm-hmm. my fam- to, to people that are out there and doing those hunts. And really, ultimately, it started that that was the only thing I had access to, like – if if you're gonna film a hunt, what what hunt are you gonna film? Well, I go elk hunting every year. I go deer hunting every year. I go, you know, antelope hunting, whatever. Those are the hunts you're gonna film. <clears throat> well, yeah. those are the hunts that I like, you know. So I continue to film those, and then every once in a while you throw in something else. <clears throat> I go on a moose hunt. I get to go on a bear hunt. Right. Whatever it might be, but all overwhelming for me, the content. Um, <clears throat> try to do it solo. And if I don't, and I'm with somebody, my brothers or whatever, then it, it is, you show up for what it is, you know, but it's just, just has, just has to be real content, real, yeah. 
it's a real hunt. I'm well, not... I think that there's more to it than that because there's a lot of people out there right now that are trying to build content and share their stories and so forth. And there's there's a lot of people doing podcasts, for example, right right now. Just a ton of outdoor and hunting podcasts, which is awesome. I've always encouraged people to either do their own podcast <clears throat> or create their own films, you know, build their own content. First of all, whether you're trying to monetize it or not, I just think it's good for hunters in general to, if they're doing it right, to share a message that that is positive about hunting. Right. Right. So I think that's great. Now, if you're trying to monetize that content, that's where I think, um, to me, this is what I've said from the beginning, kind of, which is kind of what you just said, whether I'm monetizing the content or I'm simply creating it for myself, friends, family, or for the community at large or for non hunters to consume because I want to influence them toward hunting, right? Mm -hmm. Whether I'm trying to monetize it or not, I think of my content the same way. Like the, the fact that I'm trying to monetize it doesn't have any impact on the type of content I want to produce. Right. And so I think that's a first step is if you're like, well, I need to do this because I want to make money. Well, you're already hosed from the start because if you don't have a deeper reason, reason than that, or a better motive than that, then your content is kind of be kind of flawed because of the bad motivation you have behind it. Right. 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 And if you want to get into this to become rich, it's really not, it's, it's a lifestyle career. But it's not a, a a lucrative career. Yeah, I mean, I've, for it, most, for most, I'd, yeah. most of the hunting it can world, be. there are certain. There's a few exceptions. Correct. Correct. Uh, as far as people who create media, I would say you know if you're a product manufacturer, that's a little different. That uh, helps. You know, that helps. If, if you sell consumables street. like Mountain Ops, right. you can make more money than, for example, if you're a dude that. Hunts. Bottom line, nobody makes a dime until something is sold. It's yeah. just, I mean, whether it's a digital product or whether it's a physical, tangible product, you know, that's that's one of the things that we kind of talked about a little bit is, or tried to before, but <clears throat> it's like, once you are doing it for a living or you're doing it for income or you're doing it for money, you just stepped, you just crossed over into a different category than those that are doing it for fun or mm -hmm. entertainment. Whether or not your content is the same quality or, or perceived to be the same. So somebody yeah. flipping through the YouTube channels are like Solo Hunter, then they're like XYZ. And, you know, Solo Hunter does it f for, for money. XYZ does it f for fun. You know, they got mm -hmm. nine to five jobs or cops or whatever they are. Right. The the viewer watching that on YouTube, it's really hard to separate the two. Like there is no separation. Everything is just, it's just hunting, mm -hmm. you know, whereas on TV, it's just kind of assumed that you guys are doing it for a living and, and then on YouTube, maybe you're not. So that was, that was kind of the separation there. Well, those lines have blurred. I mean, those lines have yeah, crossed yeah. big time. But when someone's coming across your YouTube channel, a lot of times they treat you and assume that you should be doing it just like joe bob and jimmy but you're doing it for money so you're throwing out an advertisement or you're mm -hmm. using a product a sponsor's product because that's where your income comes from and they automatically see a negative to that because you should be doing it like these guys are doing it because right. if you if you were really authentic and really real you would keep any advertisements out of it or you would you know right, you wouldn't right. do it that way but it's different once you're once you're doing it for money <clears throat> It's it's different. You're in a different position. But I wouldn't say your content changes because of that. It depends. You know, I had a time there when I had a contract with an ad agency that you had stipulations on the amount of airtime that you had to give to specific products. And that sucked. Honestly, that sucked big time. Oh, I've gone through some growth stuff in that space as well because 
you know, it's it, as you're trying to monetize a brand, you're sitting there trying to figure out how it all works. Right. And there's no like manual or, or, or you start talking to companies, they see that you have a sphere of influence where, where people look to you for some guidance on, be it, you know, what, what, uh, bow you like to use or what boots you like to wear. Right. I mean, um, and so they're like, we would like you to use this X, Y, Z. And I think where a lot of people f- start to fail is right from the start. Um, I think people partner with the wrong companies, right? Right from the start because they, they're in a desperate situation to monetize what they're doing because they, they either, they have bills to pay. They have things like that at home that they got to deal with. So for me, when you're building a brand to me, a big part of that, and this is what you were saying earlier about the 10 or 15 years of, or 30 years of previous life that went into this. I didn't start Gritty Bowman until I had no debt. I, I had a whole bunch of money in savings. Like, when I got Gritty Bowman, I did it for more than a year where it grew to a point where it was fairly popular. And at that point, I didn't, I didn't, I still hadn't monetized any of it. And when those companies, a lot of companies spoke to me about it, I was like, well, what do you want like from me? And then how much money are you going to pay? for me to do that. And I start looking at him like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do what you're asking. I don't want that message mixed up with my message. And so I said no to a lot until I got to a point where I had more leverage because the brand had gotten even bigger. People had tuned in and there was more influence. Then I could say, okay, this is how I want to rep your product because I like it. I use it and I value it. And that partner made sense for me because it didn't mess with my integrity. Like it, it had all the pieces that I needed to be able to say, yeah, I'm proud to be using this. Right. 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 And then I could say to the audience, the same thing and use it. And then I get compensated for that from the company and I'm able to, do even more with gritty. And so I never had to like be in a position where I needed the money. Yeah. See, and I did, I have been there, you know, um, I, I have taken contracts with ad agencies. I I can't say direct with an, an actual company, but it was through an ad agency. And that's, that was the most difficult position because they're making promises to brands that, the brands don't necessarily know that you exist or, or, or do they care? They've contracted this ad agency to do their job for them. Right. So that gets a little bit awkward because they're putting stipulations on what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, I fell into that or I say fell into it. It was actually, I'm very grateful to have had it because that was at a very pivotal point in solo hunter where the growth was happening and where, you know, we needed that mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for that. You know, yeah, I did have to do and use some products that I wouldn't have otherwise used, but my family stayed fed, you know, yeah. I kept growing and kept pushing with my products that I was coming out with. And it was, it was a great thing. If you just looked at it from the outside and, and watch solo hunter, you'd think, man, that show is full of advertisements. Well, that's because it was. Yeah. But you know what? Um, well, even me, I, 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 that's what I've had to deal with too is, you know, just an influx of advertising. You know, I've never done advertisements on the podcast really. You know, I'll say, hey, there's a coupon code or something like that. But I really haven't done a lot of – I've never done like 30-second or 60-second CPM sales where you just like – throw out a commercial where like Rogan does at the beginning of his podcast. I haven't done a lot of that kind of, Hey, this is all the sponsor stuff. Let's get this out of the way and now start the show. And, and part of that's just because I don't, 
don't believe it's effective or it works because that's not how I buy anything. All that stuff I ignore. Right. Doesn't matter whose show I'm listening like, to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Every time. Yeah. I mean, but I did do a lot of podcasts with people because that actually made me curious. Like if somebody like went and checked out Yeti, for example, and they were down at the office and they interviewed the guys there. Like I'm curious from that perspective. Um, well, yeah. If they're not getting an advertisement or bump out of what are they, what are they getting out of it? You know? Right. So there is, there's this balance, this, this lessons learned kind of thing where you kind of experiment with, you know, monetizing your brand and working on it and everybody goes through different, different kind of growth. But back to the partner thing I wanted to talk about was I think people choose the wrong partners for one of the issues is this, like, and this is what I've done. And I, and I just, it's like back to what you were saying about the ad agency too many times. I think people partner with a company that has no interest in their brand in a year, two years, three years from now. Yeah. It's a, it's just a for fulfilling an obligation. It's like, Hey, we need to sell X many units of the, our product. Yeah. We want you to do that. And so they don't care really whether you're around in a year or two years or three years. They, they just need the next hottest person when you're gone. Or, and if you're still there, they can keep paying you. Yeah. I've had a few sponsors like that. Yeah, those are BS. Those Which they sponsors, were good products, good products, but all they're doing is building up their bottom line. I'll name them: Carbon Express, Gorilla, building up their bottom line, and mm-hmm. then the last year of, in business, they're going to cut all of their marketing dollars and expenditures so they can show that they're more profitable and sell out. You know, during the at the time, it's a good product to use. Carbon yeah. Express arrows, great arrows. You know. But that's the you're sort just of a thing. tool. You're just being. I mean, Lee and Tiffany got dropped. I mean, my they dropped that's, everybody. That's the that's so. What I'm saying is, part your partners matter. Right. Like who you're working with is a huge part of your success. I think when you're building something like this, and so that means when you're dealing when you're when you're partnering with someone, I look at it like a marriage, right? So I usually now I say, I want two or three years of commitment from you. I don't want just one. I want two or three and I, and I'll take a lot less compensation. Now that you're more established, you can do that. You know, when you're starting now, it's it's a lot more difficult. But the more money you have in the bank and the less debt you have, the more you can hold out, hold out. And that matters because to me, if 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 someone's willing to do a two or three year deal, let's say three years, then I know that they're committed to my brand. So they're not going to send me some advertisement and say, or write up some contact that says, "Hey, we want you to advertise this crappy product we'll do X or of X do number week. of posts per week," which are just like noise to people, yeah. and. They're over-marketed to already. I'm over-marketed to. I see it every day as I spin through Instagram. That's right? why you it's just like, got to turn off Instagram. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Post and walk away, man. But but what I notice is um, if you have the right partner, they're like, yeah, dude, we don't want you to do that on your page. We don't want you to do that in the podcast. That's bad form. You know, that's not a way to – that you're not helping people anymore. You're just inundating them with sales. Right. So I look at it like if I'm going to try to influence someone, I want to do it in an honest and natural way. So if I use a product I like, I'll just say I use this and I liked it. Well, it took a while to get that to get that sort of agreement in place with companies because a lot of them really did want. I want this many posts per week. I want this hashtag. I want this done, blah, blah, blah. I don't do any of that anymore. But it took a while to get to that space. Oh, and that might change. They might come to you and say, you know what, Gritty, we're not we're not getting out of you what we want to get out of you. We need you to start using doing this number of posts. Like it could change. You just never know. They might get a new marketing director and it's like, Oh, gotta change all this, you know. And and for me, as long as what I do in that space is adding value, then it's, then it's, then it works for me. But if I feel like it's, 
if if I feel like it's wasting people's time or t- decreasing value, right? I want to take. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And so I kind of feel like you know, and you've come from a, a long TV background, where in TV people are used to commercials. They're they're kind of like this is how they're marketed to. But I think when you start moving into YouTube and you start moving into the digital space that's out there, people are fed up with that. Well, that's kind of why TV consumption is, well, depends on who you talk to. TV consumption is down. That's why it's changing, you know? Yeah. It's just because our, our appetites for being advertised to have changed, you know, or our appetites for, well, and, and where you get influence from, like, I remember being a little kid and seeing a commercial pop up for like, let's say frosted flakes, right? And the tiger comes out and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, man, I, I really want some frosted flakes. Right. Now, <laughs> if that commercial came up or somehow came up on Instagram, I'd be like, yeah, but who's eating them and likes them. <laughs> right. That That's how I am now. It's like, okay, great. Here's this commercial, but, who do I trust and feel like I know through the social media space, which I have a vast network of people that have actually used that and liked it. I mean, and I then I it pop up and I'm like, I want some frosted flakes. Then I go to those sources and I'm like, have you tried the frosted flakes? And they're like, yeah, I have. And they're do awesome. Do you think that's normal? Or do you oh, I think like that's how, norm? that's how I think the new generation consumes. I'm not 100%. part of the new genera- generation. 100%. That's why it's difficult for me is because I'm not a consumer. You know, so it's hard for me to know as a, as a, as a content creator, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to really wrap my hands around to the, cons- how it's being consumed. Like Joel and I have this argument, mm-hmm. not argument. We have this heated discussion. discussion all the time because I'm like, he's like, do this. He's like, what do you think of this? This this. I'm like, Joel, I don't know. I don't watch TV. I don't. I don't browse social media. No, like, we've talked I am about not that on YouTube. I'm like, I don't do Facebook. I don't know what my customers want. You know, that's I, why I agree with you. I, but I think I, I truly believe that today's youth and younger people and people who are in the social media space, they consume based on their, their social network connections based on the feedback and the trust that they have in people that they feel like they have a connection with, or they do in fact have a connection with. If a commercial comes up and says, here's this slick new headlamp and it does this, this, like, this, and this. I'm going to buy that headlamp. No, I don't <laughs> believe so. The people look at it and they go, huh? I wonder yeah. what Aaron thinks about that headlamp because I get those texts all the time. People That's are because like, you guys have opened yourself up to that. Like you guys have become, but there's a lot of people who have as well. Like, most of the other backcountry podcasts, most of the other, um, you know, uh, hunting groups that people follow, no, they, it's the same thing. Like, I'll get a text and someone will say, Brian, what do you think of this? And it'll be a commercial or it'll be a post about a product or even a product that we use. And they'll say, hey, there's this thread that they talked about this. What's your opinion on it? Like, they want to know. They have in their mind a, these different trusted people that they follow or that they feel are authorities on a certain thing. And this is because those people have demonstrated that they know what they're talking about. Or right? at least talked about how they talked about how they know how they talk. About well, it. there is some of that, but I think <laughs> that only takes you so far if you're a fraud. I'm just saying that I think they know they have those sources and they're like, I'm going to ask that person. They didn't used to be able to do that, Tim. They didn't used to be able to send a text message I don't, out to someone or an email to a certain ce- celebrity type person or – or. Here's what I think. Mm-hmm. I think that happens, sure. But you guys, op- you guys like positioned yourself to like, hey, ask us questions. Contact yeah, us yep. about this gear or whatever. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. So maybe your audience – is going to do that or a portion of your audience mm-hmm. is going to do that. I think that people are like, uh, it's more like, I wonder what I'm, I need a new arrow rest. Mm-hmm. They're like, I wonder what so-and-so is using. So they'll go to their social media and they're like zooming in. 
I oh, can't quite <laughs> tell. So then they go down another. Oh, there's one. Oh, QAD. Okay. And then they're like, well, I wonder what this person's using. And then they go and look or they'll, or they're watching the videos and they're like, mm-hmm. pause that so they can zoom in and see. I mean, I totally agree. People will catch stuff on my thing that I'm just like, what? Like I did a video in my garage, mm-hmm. just a quick little thing, whatever. You would have had to have stopped it within three frames to be able to pick out that specific product that was sitting on my desk right mm-hmm. there. And a guy did that. And he's like, Hey, where'd you get that? You know, it's like, <laughs> but I think, I, so I think that's how people are. I don't think they're reaching out and saying, I mean, it, no, no, I agree. Do, I agree. But I agree with that. I'm, what I'm saying is, is they're not being influenced by commercials. That's I, what I'm saying I to purchase. People, I think we're still influenced by commercials to be. To I be agree purchases. a little bit. I bought a pair of insoles the other day because my feet hurt. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh. Because you saw a commercial? Sweet. An advertisement on, it was on YouTube. This mm-hmm. one was, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, sweet. I'm going to look into that because I was looking for something to help my feet. Bottom. Advertisement. Well, worth. when you but said I you looked into it, what do you mean? Oh, I purchased those suckers, man. $75 worth. Oh, but you didn't go on to Instagram or Facebook or no, on I your go social to the company's website, read up on them and everything, and everybody said they were awesome, yeah. so I bought them, and they're not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is this: you probably won't do it off a commercial. I, next my point, time. <laughs> my point is this: I am not a consumer. I'm not your general right guy. I'm not here. I'm not my follower look, on Instagram look, or whatever else because I, I think, don't know. I do. I consume things differently. So, so let me throw this curveball at you, okay? So Give if me you're a fastball, I'll hit that fastball. <laughs> so if you've got the so part of the issue is by the content you produce, you attract a certain character or personality of individual. I think that is correct. Yes. Right. If you're correct. if you're producing, you know heavy metal music behind your, you know, your uh, uh, sluicing some six by six bull elk. Slocking. You're slocking with something. With arrow bloods everywhere and your logo's like the movie 300, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. You're going to attract a certain type of individual to that, right? Right. You produce something more like Solo Hunter, you're going to attract a certain type of person to that, okay? Right. So... Hush, you're going to attract a certain kind of person to that. Born and raised outdoors. So the type of content you produce attracts a certain individual. I would right? agree to that wholeheartedly, yes. And so you got to know your audience. Based on no. the type well, of stuff that you create, you're you... going to attract a certain individual. What I mean is, for example, the other part of that is where do where is your media consumed? Because the consumption habits of people... The, where they go and consume content tells you a lot about that well, person. Where is a whole different conversation than just what they're consuming? Where is... But they, they're they both critical. In my opinion, they have a critical impact on that, on your brand, on the audience. For example... Right, but are you creating content for your audience or are you creating content based off of your interests and what you're already doing anyway? No, I think that your your content should be you, however right. you want what you believe in. And what your type of content is is the type of viewer that you're attracted to. Right. But um, so if you stray from that content all of a sudden and now you're producing something totally different than what your audience came to you for. There's a disconnect, a huge disconnect, and you'll see that with certain brands where they'll be uh, they'll be doing their thing, and all of a sudden it takes a hard right turn. Maybe, maybe they're stoked about it. Maybe they're like, finally, he got his act together. Well, usually yeah, your audience changes. The yeah. old one drops, and you change. get a new one. Yeah, or maybe they're like okay with it too, and maybe they're not. Maybe they just, you know. But yeah, I think I think that. So, what I'm getting at is. On the where it's hosted, where your audience, where they so you're consume bringing in content. That where okay, I'll shut up. I want to because what I'm thinking about is you know there are certain things that based on the consumption habits of someone who who spends most of their time on Instagram. Like I love CrossFit, so I'm watching some CrossFit athletes. I'm looking at their programming. I'm looking at what workouts they're kind of engaged in. 
you know, just kind of following along at some of their Instagram stories. I look at some of the podcasts I like to follow and look at the new shows they're publishing and kind of what's going on there, right? Like I follow some athletes. I follow some of that. And then I follow some hunting personalities, right? right? And I check on those guys. And they're guys all mixed and, in. And they're all mixed in. And and so I'm I'm pretty interested in, in some of that stuff. And, and I'm busy. So I don't really have time to sit down and watch a TV show. Right. You know I don't how, even have TV. You know how Snyder said he doesn't sleep longer. He has to sleep or not to sleep, sleep faster. faster. Right. So here's the deal. You're watching TV faster. And instead of pushing the button to change the channel, you're swiping your thumb to change the channel. And right. And you're watching it faster. But on that medium, okay, as I'm going through, let's say, Instagram, if you were to throw a commercial at me, I'm not looking at it. Depends. You see commercials all the time that look exactly like a post. What do you think all of them are what getting I'm saying. mocked for because they take a picture of their bow? That's or what the I'm Acubo saying, though. Or their if you send, or whatever that's what I said. If it's a traditional it commercial, because they're posting it like that's a commercial. That's what I'm saying, though. Is look at my page. I got. I'm rattling horns, but you can see the Under Armour logo right there. That's a commercial. Right, but that's what I'm talking about. Is the way you market to someone on Instagram. Because of that person's consumption habits has to be done in a certain way. Correct. Versus on TV. Correct. TV, you can just interrupt them in the middle of the show. <laughs> when it when it comes up, it's not a thirty second interruption where you got to sit through it exactly. to get to the rest of your show. Exactly. Okay. What I'm saying is you have to tailor that marketing to yeah. the audience yeah. based on their consumption and habits. What I'm saying is when you sit down and watch TV, you're watching a 30-minute program. Mm -hmm. When you sit down and watch TV right here on Instagram, because that's exactly what it is, mm -hmm. you're watching, okay, that's a five-second program, two-second program. I see what you're saying. And then they're like, oh, who's I this guy? I don't see it that way, though. Now, all of a sudden, I'm on this channel. I'm like, okay, I'm watching this this show. I'm watching this show. It's like, okay, I just watched him for 10 seconds. And then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, here's a CrossFitter, <laughs> zero seconds. But for you, you're like, oh, this guy's lifting weights. He's doing reps with heavy, heavy weight. Now you might watch that for 10 minutes. It's the same thing as TV. It's just in such faster form. And so it's, it's screwing with our brains because we're all wanting things so rapidly. And it's also like, but I don't, it's making I us don't... all... It, it's giving me an anxiety attack. I don't because, agree, like, everything though, because, is processing so fast. Because as I'm looking through this, right, like, for instance, I'm on Remy's page right now. I'm, I'm looking for an advertisement. Here. You won't see one on Remy's page other than. I'm taking over the Vortex Optics Insta story. You know exactly. That's an that's advertisement. Because he does a fabulous job. He does a fantastic job with advertising. That's because that's the re there's a reason why advertisers gravitate to people like Remy or people like Cam or hopefully myself or the all other mm -hmm. the other people that are doing it what a, how I feel is the right way. I feel that Remy is doing it the right way. He's spot on. I feel that Stephen Ronella is doing it the right way. He's spot on. Um, there are certain individuals who are high profile and, and have advertisers and sponsors that foot the bill that are doing it in a fabulous way. It's not in your face. It's great content. They're compelling stories. And yet, when you look at Remy's page, there is no doubt that he's wearing an Under Armour. Under Armour. There's no doubt that he's using Yeti coolers. There's no doubt that he's a Gerber bad -acidor. There's uh -huh. no doubt, you know, that he's using Vortex Optics. No doubt whatsoever. So he's doing a great job at it. And that's what I'm saying. Same thing. Like when people are out there trying to monetize a brand and let's say they're doing it on Instagram, you look at someone like Remy, like you just said, you mm -hmm. went down this whole list. There's a way that adds value to the person following the story. That's not in your face. That makes that marketing acceptable to the person it's not offensive it's not it's not it doesn't interrupt you in the middle of what you're doing it most of what remy's got down most of the time there's something insightful written there right the art of cooking in the dirt that's what i'm and saying. then he goes on about it right and he kind of talks about it that's but there's a blatant advertisement there for 
Yeti and the products what that I'm he's saying using is that's how you do it. But that's what I'm saying is it's because he's serving the audience. Is he he's he's serving both? He's giving them entertainment. He's giving them knowledge about how you cook in the dirt. Okay, but he's he's giving his advertisers exactly what they ask for as well. So it's a perfect marriage. I agree. It's a beautiful but marriage. What it's I'm like getting at is in the world today, you have to serve your community. You have to serve the people that are following you. You have to add value to them. If right. So it's a give and a take. So Remy gives somewhere in this, this conversation. Did it sound like or feel like that I was saying don't serve your audience? No, no, no. I'm just I'm trying to help someone that's listening. That's build like trying to build a brand or right. is in this position. Right. Serving your audience by giving them value, value in your authentic content, not by right creating stuff that's new. and then it's a take because in there you've added something about. You know, you 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 have your partner's gear in the photo or yeah. something that you're doing, which is honest, real, and genuine. Remy likes Yeti. That's why it's part of the package, right? Right. right. But because he does it in a way where he's just provided some education, some knowledge, some some inspiration, people take it and go, and they see that, and they're they're good. But when you sit there and you you have a dead deer in front of you and you prop all your products out in front of it and you get a photo. Right, right. And you say, I couldn't have done it without such and such, you know, backpack. You're not. Yes, you've now served. You've now done what your sponsor, your partner has told you you need to do. But all you maybe did, maybe you're just doing that to try to get that partner to. Well, all I'm saying is, yeah. is what you've did is there was no give, right? It was just straight up take, and I see and what you're people's, saying. People's uh, people today are not. We lit. We're past that. You can't just stop the middle of their program and shove something in their face anymore. We can s- cut out commercials. We can do DVR. We can s- we can. Download it from VHX. We can do right. all kinds of stuff. We don't have to. We can skip most advertisements on YouTube. We're we're past that point. So right. if you're going to share content with the with people that are out there, I just I'm looking at it going. Don't take. Think. Give first. Add value, and then from there, people can you can you can then. Sh- Drop in the things that you want. And that's natural, real, and people value it. Yeah. I think there are a lot of brands out there. When I say brand, major brands, advertisers, you know, those that are sponsoring the majority of, of people that are out there that that get it. You know, mm-hmm. I think that in the digital space, they've come to the realization that um, the advertising game in its traditional format is over. You know, Facebook Facebook is still heavily advertisements, but you don't see that a lot on Instagram. And I think these brands that have figured that out and have aligned themselves with brand ambassadors or those Uh that represent them, they're the ones that are doing it a good, good job. You know, Yeti, Yeti jumps out at me that phenomenal content, their videos, their films are amazing. I think that, um, First Light does a, a great job, you uh-huh. know, with with imagery and that type of thing. I think Under Armour does a good job. There's these brands that are doing it, just like we say. We stopped on that Weatherby ad, or it wasn't even an ad, just uh-huh. the Weatherby page, you know. Those brands are making that transition from traditional advertisement, and they're yeah. advertising to us still. Like, they're not pulling their advertising – their plans stuck. or impressions, numbers of impression goals that they're looking for and all that type of thing. Because like I said before, until something is sold, they don't make any money, but it's the selling process that is changing. Yeah. And I, I, what? I think it's kind of funny to watch some of these companies because I see them create a cool video or like a commercial that, that you would totally see on TV. And then they throw it on Instagram oh, it and work expect way. it to stick. Yeah. They just use their TV style of marketing and put it on Instagram. Well, and it doesn't carry over the same way. It just doesn't. Thing, I'm like, not everybody started on Instagram, you know? 
it's been a learning curve. It's been a mm-hmm. learning process. It's well, and I think Facebook time. is powerful still. Like super, I don't leverage it like no I question. should. No question. No question. But I think Facebook is um, is there's a lot of people on there all the time. But I have noticed. I mean, it does seem like much of the hunting community is on Instagram, and I think it's just because hunting is so visual. visual. Yeah. And it it just lends itself well. Like when you see a fish caught, you know, yeah. oh, on a beautiful river, you see an elk or it's nature is so artistic. It just seems to like, boom, stick on Inst- Instagram. I think if I had any advice, you know, we, we mentioned Remy's page and some other, some other mm-hmm. pages in that. And, um, if I had any advice, even, even for myself and that I, that I try to work on, if you're wanting to, establish a relationship with a brand or start generating sponsorships, which it appears as you browse through the newsfeed, it appears that a lot of people are trying to strike up those relationships. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you have to blatantly, you know, over, over promote this product. Even if, even if you are, do have a a relationship with them and and a sponsorship deal or whatever, like, work with them to try to figure out a way that you don't have to well, like Under Armour sent us um, a PDF outline of their marketing, their digital marketing goals for 2018. Yeah. Um, beginning in 17 and working in through 18. Yep. And it's, it's like super detailed. When I first looked at it, I was like, Holy crap, this sucks. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to have to do all this, 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 but then you break it down and start looking at it. And then my, my brand mind jumps into it thinking of it you know for my products and different things it's like this really makes sense and this is this is what they they're after it's not they're not after advertising they're not after you know just talking about stuff all the time they're after exactly what we've been trying to do like with remy's page and some of the Mm -hmm. other they're after just they making a difference it's it's you know, there's, there's guilt by association, but there's also, you know, triumph by association. Mm-hmm. They want to be associated with brand representatives that are highly respected in the hunting industry or that are, you know, have an influence, influencers. There's all these different words, brand ambassador, right. influencer, whatever totally. else, mm-hmm. but are doing it in a very palatable way. There's a lot of people out there on social media that aren't doing it in a very palatable way, mm-hmm. in my opinion. If I read through someone's post and I come across, you know, four, five, six hashtags. And, and I, I, I went to the tree stand, but before I did, I pulled, I, you know, I did 50 push ups and I did whatever, you know, you could talk about other different <laughs> products. We, we, we all know what are out there, but you, you, you make it a point to mention each of these. And then you're showing like, it's not genuine it's anymore. Not genuine and it's, and it's not genuine. It's not over the top. It's not val. It's not respecting. I think the the person following you. You're not really trying to make a difference. Well, like you in said, someone's life, you're trying to make a sale. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ever think of it as they're not trying to give. Like you, you said you mm-hmm. got to give first. Well, I, I, I totally agree. I just never thought of it in that term. You know, giving, yeah, giving to them. But when you when you're not, you also said it great that you're taking. So you're t- they, you just sucked away my time and my to read through all that when I was it turned off when otherwise I was compelled enough by the photo to actually read what you said. So you got me the first right. time, but totally. then I read through it and then you lost me, you right? Um, and that that all comes down to what we're talking about. If you're trying to build and create your brand, your brand is tied to other brands. It's not, you're not just a standalone brand. Um, nobody is. Even when mountain ops came out, they were not a standalone brand. They associated and tied themselves to other brands right. and other people um, to collaborate with and grow. So you, you've got to represent them in a light that, you know, both they agree to, but also that's palatable to your, to your, consumer this is where you know i had been consuming various types of content and i kind of saw this thread of things that i liked and so when i started to do the podcast i really wanted it to be something where i add value add value add value add value you know to people and then now and then ask 
for something in return, like a review on faith on, on, uh, iTunes or, you know, go out and support this company. They, they're supporting me like, but what needs to be there at the very start on the outset is, is something of value for, for people. And so, um, I, you know, I didn't come up with this all on my own, but this, I'm going to read this to you. This is the book, Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. And here's a little thing about the, um, yeah, about the book. It says, um, best-selling author and social media expert, Gary Vaynerchuk shares hard won advice on how to connect with customers and beat the competition. Um, it says when managers and marketers outline their social media strategies, they plan for the right hook, their next sale or campaign that's going to knock out the competition, right? Here's our next, they plan for the right hook. So then he says, even companies committed to jabbing, patiently engaging with customers to build the relationships crucial to successful social media campaigns want to land that punch that will take down their opponent on their customer's uh, resistance in one blow. Right hooks convert traffic to sales and easily show results, except when they don't. And I see that right hook as, as, you know, where someone goes out and they do this huge giveaway, right? Um, a two day sale on blah, 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 you know, you get, you know, 30%, you get this massive sales mm -hmm. push, right? Or you do some giveaway where you're like, I'll give away this product. And then, you know, and you get, and, mm -hmm. and it works, yeah. right? Yeah. We're doing one right now. Yeah. And so then it says, uh, um, thanks to massive change and pro proliferation in social media platforms, the winning combination of jabs and right hooks is different now. And then Vaynerchuk shows that while communication is still key, context matters more than ever. It's not just about developing high quality content, but developing high quality content perfectly adapted to specific social media platforms and mobile devices. Content tailor made for Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and Tumblr. So, you know, I read that book, I mean, it's a while ago now, and I can't remember it completely. And he also wrote the book, The Thank You Economy. And the book Crush It. And all those books really helped me kind of get an idea of so, social the social media world. And, you know, it kind of a lot of my ideas kind of revolve. I, I keep thinking about this book. But when he talks about media adapted for specific media platforms. Right. Right. So the same commercial that you can get away with or that works on, for example, television just does not work on the on the Instagram platform and vice versa, right? right? So based on someone's consumption habits and where they spend their time, the message should be tailored differently for that group. Correct. And so the other part that he talked about, like in the thank you economy and jab, 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 right hook, the jab, jab, jab is give, give, give. And the, the right hook is ask. And the the concept of the book is is around give the give give to people give 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 three times to every ask like just an example an analogy but the idea is like with Remy you know when he's posting he's giving people something of value and he's he's barely asking right but when you just ask which to me is those other types of advertisements, right? Where you're not really putting much time into giving them anything of value. Right. Did you entertain them? Did you make them laugh? Did you inspire them? Did they get learn something new? If, if you're not doing some of those things and you're not adding value as a media creator, you have no business asking Correct. for anything. Well, if you're not giving them what they're after, they're not going to be around for very long. You know, if all they're getting is advertised to, it's really easy to change that channel or click that unfollow button or anything else. And when he talks about catering your, your strategy to different platforms, you know, there might be more gives on Instagram than there might be on Facebook. 
Right. What we do is Instagram is set up to be way more organic. It's, it's way more just day to day content. It's, it's real life. We've pushed everything through to Facebook. So they're getting that as well. And then, you know, we we do giveaways and different things that's all tied into there, but it's, it's what we feel is really good content and something that the consumer would actually enjoy, like a giant, you know, an art drawn, an original from Joel Pilcher or whatever it might mm-hmm. be. But on Facebook, we get a little bit more aggressive with our advertising. So as a brand, I have a product line and some merchandise and all that type of thing outside of sponsors. So for, for just my company and my business, we put a lot of investment into Facebook advertising. Right. And it's because Facebook is set up for that. It's, it's got good analytics. It's got, um, good results Uh and people on Facebook are a little bit more conditioned to advertisements and it has carousel ads, all these different types of things that you can do that we would never try to your store. Yeah. We would never mm -hmm. try that on Instagram because it just doesn't work for that platform. Right. But it's highly effective for me as an advertiser or as a, 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 a product. I agree. So YouTube is differently. YouTube, we do a little bit of a, of a combination. There's a lot of product integration into the content, but yep. there's also, you know, we do segmented breaks just like we would on television, but they're a lot shorter. They're more yeah. comp- compact. They're 15 second breaks, three of them rather than 30, three minute breaks that right. you would get on television. Right. So we are doing things differently. Now on Facebook, we're giving even more. We're uploading full episodes onto Facebook as well because that viewing audience, there's a, there's a large viewing audience on Facebook. And it's not, you know, I guess it is, it's two parts. Mm-hmm. We're wanting to increase, maximize the number of impressions that we can get on our content, you know, mm-hmm. so that we can boost. The more, the more places us. you post your content, the more platforms, right. just the more people it reaches. Because people have a certain platform of choice. They're the people who watch Gritty Bowman on iTunes, who subscribe to the video version of the podcast, which most people don't even know is there. Right. But there's a subset of people that they never go to YouTube. They watch it through iTunes on their mobile device. That's how they do it. They're either too snobby or too intellectual <laughs> or YouTube too, too different, you know, like they don't want to be on YouTube. And then YouTubers, they're not going to iTunes. Right. To, down, to watch it. Platform. And so, yeah, I think the more places you can put it. But Instagram and Twitter only allow you, you know, Instagram stories shorts. or what, 15 seconds? Yeah. Or you can do a 60-second clip in your timeline. Twitter is 30 seconds or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Facebook, you can do a two-hour film if you want to. Yeah. You know? So they, they are, they're all powerful in their own right. And becoming a master of them is – but when you're building a brand – you know, we didn't really talk about that too much, but it's, it's the brand is really your content, right? Monetizing it though, well, is kind of what we talked about a lot today. Garvey's talking about brands that are selling product, you know? Yes. He's not talking about brands that are just running a YouTube channel and trying to get as many views as they can so they can sell sponsorship. Yeah. But I think they're the same thing. I don't think they are. I think that. Brands that are just running a YouTube channel trying to increase so they can sell sponsorship. Mm-hmm. What are they? What are they asking for from their cus- from their viewers? They're not selling anything. They're not. At, they're not. They don't need that. You left mean term. like if you're monetizing a YouTube channel? Yeah. Or what are they? They're not selling a product. Sure, they are. What? Sure, they are. They're selling. So you're saying Yeti coolers, right? It depends on who they're partnered with. Yeah. I get, I get you. Right. I mean, yeah. they're not selling. I look, I look so at so it. Tim, you sell solo hunter products, correct? But you right. also sell Under Armour products. You sell both, yeah. Just in in a different way. Just not a hard sale, right? Yeah. And and so I think the concept's still the same. You still are. Um, they they you you still build your content, and the to me again the content one litmus test to tell if your content is, of, is, 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 you know, dialed in is, are you doing it? Would you be doing the same content, whether you were being paid or not paid? Correct. Uh, to me, that's, that kind of speaks at the level of it, right? If you're like, I wouldn't do this if I wasn't paid, maybe yeah, if that you, costs, shouldn't you shouldn't do it. do it. Right. Yeah. Maybe because 
that 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 to me is kind of right at the outset going to have a problem with connecting with people. Um, so you know, uh, and then and then based on the type of content you're producing, you're going to attract a certain individual. Is that the kind of individual you want? Right. following you, right. Right? right? If you're hyper negative, you bitch all the time about stuff, you're going to attract hyper negative bitch people, right? Right. If you're positive and you try to make a difference, you're going to attract people who are positive and try to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it goes. You got to think of the, the sponsors that you're approaching and trying to align with and have their thoughts in mind as well. You know, what type of people is Sitka going to be interested in, you know, mm -hmm. as a customer? Exactly. Because so certain, certain brands aren't into certain things. So I think I think the content determines that. And then when it comes to, mo I think you know, partners that care about my future are the partners I want. Right. So we have these long conversations where I'm like, okay, I get what you need. You need to grow your influence, your company. You need your brand to be. You need to you need people to buy your product, right? I get what you need. Well, do you get what I need? Do you, do you understand what Gritty Bowman needs? And that's a partner who actually cares about my future, not someone who wants to use me to make money. And they're totally different because some people sign up for that deal because the company's like, I'll pay you X, Y, Z, and you're going to do this, this, and this. And a, and a dude says... Sign me up without a care for those, what those obligations are going to do to negatively impact the, the brand he's trying to build. Right. You know what I mean? I get it. Until that company sells to a holding company and then you're dealing with an ad agency all over <laughs> Sounds again. Sounds like deja vu for you. you. What, man. Yeah, I've been through it all. Like you, you're dealing with an individual – um, and then that individual leaves or, you know, whatever, right. you know, that's why I think, you know, it's, it's two and three year deals too are like, there's no short term. It's not like what happens in that situation is they're not dedicated to you f for three years. They're not looking at it from a long-term perspective. They're looking at it from like a Q1, Q2 Correct. or, and, you know, before this, I was in the corporate world and I worked with, I worked for publicly held companies and often in the difference between the private and the public was night and day because the private companies like, we don't care what people think. We're just trying to do the right thing to grow the business in three years, four years, five years, and so on. Publicly held companies are like, we need Q1 to look like this. And then we need Q2 to look like this and Q3 and Q4. And so everything is motivated by a short-term gain without really paying attention to the long term. And it's a bad place to make decisions. So when I partner with a company for six months, they don't know if I'm going to be around. They don't care. They just want to use up what they got. Hey, you do this, we'll do this. And then it's over. I don't feel like we're both making decisions for each other that really care about each other's long-term value. Right. Yep. So you've been with Under Armour for how long? Four years. So. Four years. So, yeah, I, I, I just, I mean, I just feel like long-term partners make for it's, um, a, a, a more... It's a lot easier now... Um, and that, that's some advice too, is, is, is choose, choose your partners, mm -hmm. you know, choose who you want to be with and, and look at them as somebody that you could be with for forever or for the long term. Um, it's easier once you're established and been around for a while to be able to yeah. establish that because those brands that have been around and are, are looking long term tend to be very, very, um, calculated in their, in their relationships and you know they they want to make sure that you're going to be established and be around for yeah. them too if they're going to invest in you they want to make sure you're going to be there and it's really hard for a startup for someone to look at that and not not get burned i mean there's there's big brands that have been burned big time because of you know hype 
or jumping on board with someone that wasn't established, you know, may yeah. or may not have had, had, you know, fake following or whatever it is. And they've been burned. So they're a lot more cautious and calculated than they've ever been. Yeah. And Under Armour has some. <laughs> <laughs> they've had their balls busted. That's yeah. Sure. They they went through a little. Yeah. We can call it a deba- debacle. No, a debacle? we can call it a debomard. <laughs> de- de- <laughs> it's. It's uh, uh, we all survived that, you know, and, and there's, there's always, there's always going to be things here and there, but you know, at the bottom line, we're dealing with some, some really good people and, and they believe in what we're doing. And, you know, I, I feel like we have a roster with Under Armour of really good people. Mm-hmm. You know, when you talk about Eva and Cam and, and, and Rihanna and Remy and myself and Green Jason Tree. Carter and Green Tree, I mean, you got some nip quality individuals that are associated with a quality brand, you know, and the reality of life is there that any brand can make changes at any time. They can make corporate decisions at any time to um, continue down the path of the hunting division or not, you know, Mm -hmm. the same, same could go with, well, Gore would never do it with Sitka because Gore is in the hunting space, but you know, any brand could, could make right. life altering decisions. So. Well, and I expect that. I I, I don't want to see it the way Carbon Express. Well, that's that's just corp. That's just business. You know, owned by a family for thirty years, and it comes time to to wash your hands of it. That's that's what you do as a corporation. You boost boost revenue in that last year or two of, of doing business. Right. And one way to do that is cut all marketing dollars and advertising because you have spillover, especially in the hunting industry. I get that. So I'm just saying you that sell for a higher dollar I and do your best to whatever, to work with individuals who care about your future as much as you care about theirs. Cause I look at it in these terms. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time building a brand that, that I've partnered with. And believe me, I I've, made decisions to partner with certain brands because I highly value what they stand for and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't want to spend my time, for example, like I like Swarovski. I mean, they make great glass. They're European optics company that frankly isn't into hunting in the U S the way other optic companies are. They don't stand for conservation in the same way. And so I have a hard time putting my energy into a company like that because I don't want to build that company. Right. I want to build a different company. And so I feel like if I'm going to support a company, you know, if they're going to support me, I want to support them in a way that we're both have our, our, our ideals aligned. And I think I think most of them do at this point. I mean, they most of them have have weathered this transition to the digital era by now. You know, it wasn't wasn't fun for a lot of them, but I think they get it now. I mean, there's a lot of, of brands out there. There's some that are still, you know, run by maybe some inexperience. You know, I've dealt with some recently, some advertisers that you know, great products, great people, but they just changed their minds. With the with the mm-hmm, whim, maybe mm-hmm. you don't kill enough animals. Maybe you know you don't show their product enough, or whatever it is, and they just change their mind. You know, or maybe somebody else comes along that they're more interested in, and they just change their mind. You know, yeah, that happens. That's that's just that's just life of of uh of the, of their business, I guess. You know, yeah, I still think you know if you're sucks not, but it's if fun. you're if you're working on a if you're building a company. I want it both ways. You know, I want to be able to put my time and energy into into that relationship and, and build something I'm proud of while they do the same in return for me. Oh, yeah. I want someone like those that I have. When, when mm-hmm. I want someone, when they think of Prime, I want them to think of Tim Burnett, Remy Warren, Jason Matzinger, you know. Yeah. I want them to think of that. When somebody thinks of Under Armour, I want them to think of Cam Haynes, Tim Burnett, Remy Warren. I mean, go down the list. I want when someone thinks of me, like it's goes synonymous hand in hand with those, like you mentioned before, you know, you just figured that outdoor edge was just synonymous with, with solo hunter. Yeah. Cause they were one of my very first sponsors from the very get go. So when they decide that it doesn't work anymore, that's kind of odd, you know, that's kind of a, a, a hard transition, 
But we did a great job at that point establishing in your head, at least, and others' heads that, hey, the two go hand in hand, yep. you know. And now I feel like we're there with a lot of a lot of different sponsors that we have and partners. Yeah. I think it's it's bound to happen, right? Like relationships end. Right. The more you can do to ensure a long-term relationship because both partners in this are committed to each other, like right. a marriage. Yeah the better off you're going to be. If you just go into it from a, Hey, I'll do these 25 things for this much money. That's not a relationship. You've got to show your sustainability. Can you sustain again? What you're I, doing for a long period of time. Yeah, I, I just think it's a totally it's different hard. relationship. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I just, and I really believe that the relationships are, are, are what, really drive, especially in the small community that hunting is, mm -hmm. um, you, good relationships matter. They provide connections, opportunities, networking, friendships, you mm -hmm. know, you become, gain a lot of friendships over the years with, with these people that you're working with. Yep. Well, we should go to bed cause uh, I got to kill a big buck in the morning. I got to call my family. <laughs> I called my wife. I got to kill something oh, before I go to bed. That's for sure. That dinner is not sitting <laughs> Dude, <good. laughs> uh, I've been wined and dined here in Oklahoma. I'll tell you what, you will go away from here gaining weight because <laughs> the Jiffy trip is just too easy in the cafe. <laughs> Dude, we are bad. There's, I mean, I'm yeah, bad. we're not on a uh, very good, uh, we're not on the gritty diet. We're no. on the solo diet. No, we're on the solo diet. Next time I'm going to bring my own food. Bring my you little. You did bring your own food. You just aren't eating it. Well, it's kind of like that's all my day food, like the backpacking food. It's not really like yeah. breakfast and dinner kind of stuff. But um, next time. I'll sleep well when I get home because I'll get a bed instead of having to be on the cot. <laughs> I told him you, you want could to climb trade? in the bed. It's it's, it's like tonight. a twin. Uh huh. But um, I'll put my head down there and my feet by your head. <laughs> Those nasty hobbit feet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thanks for listening to the uh, Solo Hunter what a podcast. What a ramble that was. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, you find some use in, out of it. Um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I'm sweating. <laughs> Me too. This room is hot. Like it is Oklahoma's like 90 <sighs> degrees and the humidity sucks. Oh, let's go if, to bed. You told me it's supposed to be super cold tomorrow in the morning. You're going to I'm be... not convinced. It feels like it feels like San Diego in the summer out there. It doesn't matter if it is going to be hot tomorrow cuz you're going to be dressed like you're hunting the tundra <laughs> because you have so many clothes that you wear. It's Yes. Amazing. I like to be bundled up when I'm sitting still all day. I don't sit still all day. Yeah. I stand and I flex all day. <laughs> Keep the blood pumping. Hey, big thanks to you guys for tuning in to this episode of the podcast. We really appreciate your continued support that you've shown to Remy and I over the years. Your support does not go unnoticed. For more information on the Solo Hunter TV show, branded merchandise, and other great hunting gear that we make, head over to solohunter.com, that's solohntr.com, where you can check out photos and videos from the Solo Nation. And if you feel like it, purchase the All Access Membership, where you get unlimited access to our complete digital video library of episodes and web-exclusive films. You also get an unlimited 20% discount on all purchases of Solo Hunter merchandise and automatic entry into amazing product and hunt giveaways. Again, we really appreciate you for being here, and I look forward to meeting with and talking with you again soon.